Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be revisiting the Chromebook Pixel that I explored not too long ago because apparently some of you guys want to see me put Chrome OS back on this thing which I mean that makes sense it is a Chromebook but it's just been out of support for years now and Google no longer pushes out new operating system updates to it. However they do have Chrome OS Flex which we explored back in 2022 and this is a way to get Chrome OS on a computer that didn't originally ship with it which a Chromebook would not fall into that category but I don't really see any reason why we couldn't put it on the pixel I mean it meets the minimum system requirements if we go to this page here it needs to have uh, four gigabytes of RAM which it just meets that internal storage of 16 gigs we've got more than that it should be able to boot from a USB drive I mean I don't see why not I think we have a pretty good shot of uh, getting this thing working so we're going to for the second time in my life try to install Chrome OS flex on something and hopefully we will have uh, a much smoother experience this time if you remember from that previous episode I had to go through like two or three different systems before I could get it installed on something uh, so we have Google Chrome here because just like in that video we have to utilize the Chromebook recovery utility to make the USB installer so we're going to go and uh, add that to Chrome and then we'll just go up here to that extension, bring it up, and we've got a 16 gig flash drive plugged in. And then we're going to select model from the list and just choose. I actually wonder if like the Chromebook Pixel, it, it should be in here. Um, yeah, there it is, Chromebook Pixel. So we could restore this back to like the operating system that it originally shipped with, or probably the, the latest version of Chrome OS that it supports. But we're gonna select Chrome OS Flex and just hit continue and we're going to use our uh, well 14.6 gig is what windows sees it as our usb drive there and it's going to make that recovery image and wipe everything from the drive so we're going to do that have it download and well everything's looking pretty good so far all right so we're all set we've got our usb drive here we're going to go ahead and pop that in and just go to restart the machine now, this is currently running the Mr. Chromebox firmware, so this is not the original firmware uh, that would have shipped with here, and that's how that the uh, previous owner got Linux Mint running on here. So we should get a prompt there at the bottom to press escape for boot options slash settings, so we're going to do that. And we'll go down to boot menu and boot off of our USB and we should be on our way. Now, because this is not the like factory restore image, it shouldn't mess with the firmware at all. We may even be able just to dual boot this with uh, the you know existing operating system that's on here if that is an option. If it's not, that's no big deal because you know I can just always reinstall Linux later on. In fact, I do want to try out some other Linux distros. Uh, we have loaded up here. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to Chrome OS Flex. We'll say get started. And we could try it if we want to. So that's nice. It's a live USB. We'll just go with the first option and install Chrome OS Flex. Yeah, I don't see any dual booting options. It says right over here, it will overwrite all data on your device. All right, yeah, that's fine with me. So we'll install it. It will erase your entire hard drive, that's fine. And we're off to the races. So now we just gotta play the waiting game once again and hope that everything goes well for once. Oh my gosh, I can't freaking believe that. It actually worked. <laughs> Well, this was a far better experience than than I had in the original video. And we just restarted. We have the exact same screen again. You know, one thing I'm curious about, does the touch screen, the touch screen does not work. Okay, under that Linux install, we had the exact same thing. Don't think I mentioned that in the video, by the way, but yeah, the touch screen did not work under Linux Mint. It was weird because you would go into like the mouse and uh, trackpad settings and it would show the touch screen as a device, but you couldn't actually get it to work at all. And I think we have that exact same thing going on here. Maybe there's a setting that we can enable, but uh, we'll have to see once we get into it. But it has found our network adapter, so I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi here. Okay, and we're just going for personal use, checking for updates, and yeah, we got to sign into our Google account, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, sync your Chromebook, yeah, we can do that if we want to. We definitely want to create a password for this device, so I don't have to type in my long password every single time. It comes with Gemini, holy cow, we got a major upgrade, man. We got Google AI stuff, <laughs> yeah, okay, great. So that's on here, if you care. I definitely want to enable dark mode, which it looks like it just did, so that's cool. 
Oh, sunrise and sunset. It probably just, I guess, figured out what the time was and just changed it to dark mode. But I do want to keep it in dark mode permanently because it just looks better. And no, I don't really want to get any Chromebook tips. Thank you very much. So we'll get started. And yeah, here we are. Welcome to your Chromebook. Gosh, it's been a little while since I've used Chrome OS, but it's here. I mean, we've, we've got it working. Let me check that touch screen again. No, not looking like we're getting any action going on there. So let me hop into settings, which actually, how do we get into settings? Is that okay down here? We'll go to the gear and let's see. So we'll go to device, keyboard and inputs. So I do have a USB keyboard and mouse plugged in, so it found that. I don't need to mess with the keyboard settings though. It's obviously found our built-in keyboard, so that's great. Does the trackpad work? Oh, the trackpad doesn't even work, really? Oh, dang, okay, well that sucks. Uh, maybe, let me try and unplug the USB mouse. Maybe that's like screwing something up, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, we straight up cannot use <laughs> the trackpad. Does the keyboard? Yeah, okay, so the keyboard works. I can open up the search here, we can type. Okay, so <laughs> at least the built-in keyboard works, but yeah, the trackpad not working? That's, uh, that's a major problem because you're not gonna wanna have to plug in a USB mouse every single time that you uh, use this thing. But we do have this mouse settings thing that came up because I plugged it back in, uh, the USB one. So let's go into mouse settings. I don't know why I didn't do that before. That would make more sense than keyboard. But yeah, like it, it has only found the USB optical mouse. In fact, I think if I, if I like take this off, yeah, if I unplug the mouse, the mouse settings completely goes away. So that's definitely something interesting. Google's own hardware is not supported by Chrome OS Flex, which to be fair, you know, this device is not supported by them anymore, but it's like, really? It can't find its own freaking trackpad? Like, that's crazy. I'll have to maybe look that up and see if other people have tried to do this and have encountered the same problem. Okay, well, let's, let's check for updates. Apparently we're offline for some reason. Network connection error, oh, bad password. I typed the password in wrong, okay. Maybe there's like some drivers, or maybe not. It says we're up to date, so. <laughs> Firmware updates. All firmware is up to date for external devices. I don't know, let's run diagnostics. Let's just see. So we can run a battery test, which the battery appears to be totally shot on this thing, by the way. It was not charging at all under Linux Mint. Uh, when I had that installed, you would unplug it and it would just immediately die. So we could run a charge test. I might do that later. Memory test. Okay, so keyboard. We can, <laughs> like, that's it. It's just got the built-in keyboard. We've got connectivity stuff. Like, <laughs> what? It, this is crazy. Okay, I'm going to just go to Chrome here. Chrome OS Flex on Chromebook Pixel. Okay, well here's someone doing it on the 2015 variants. And this was three years ago, 2022. That was like right around the time Chrome OS Flex, which by the way, Chrome OS Flex, for those who don't know, uh, it used to be called Cloud Ready, which was like a completely separate thing. Google bought them and just basically renamed it. And now they are the ones who maintain it. In fact, in my original video, there was still some branding that said Cloud Ready. Yeah, there it is right there, installing Cloud Ready 2.0. They hadn't even changed it by that point. So this guy installed it on an Acer Chromebook. Almost everything works. Biggest problem is no audio. Have not checked the audio yet. I'll have to do that. Um, so no mention of the trackpad. Well, here's a guy who says the best way to put Flex or Linux or whatever on a Chromebook is to replace the BIOS per MrChromebox.tech if your device is supported, but there are no guarantees, everything, e.g. sound, trackpad, whatever works. I had Flex working perfectly one day and lost support for the trackpad the next, huh? That's interesting. Well, you know what? Let me just try to maybe restart. Oh, look at that. Okay, the, the trackpad worked. That actually, that actually did something. Well, if you ever needed more proof that the old turn it off and back on again advice is still relevant in 2025, there you go. Because I didn't really think that was going to do anything, but that totally fixed it. So yeah, trackpad is working now. Does the touchscreen work? Touchscreen is not working. That sucks. Uh, you know what? Not a big deal, though. I mean, that's exactly the same way it was under Linux Mint. I'm totally fine with the touchscreen not working. Obviously, it would be great if it did, but hey, we could always just restore it back to factory settings if I really want to experience the touchscreen. Now I don't know what to do, though. I'm like so used to something going wrong and having to like troubleshoot for five hours, but okay, this might actually be kind of a breeze. Uh, I guess we can just explore Chrome OS Flex a little bit. 
but let me go into settings because I do want to try to run that battery test. Oh, it was under about, yeah, diagnostics. Okay, let's just run this charge test. Charged 0% in 0 seconds. Okay, that's <laughs> that's not, uh, that, that's, that doesn't sound right. Let me go ahead and just try to yank the power cable, I guarantee you, yeah, it's just gonna die immediately. Yeah, the battery is completely shot in this thing, I'm gonna have to replace that. So, of course, we got our file browser. We can go in here and, you know, view Google Drive and your files and all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to, like, find interesting stuff to do. One thing we can do is enable uh, Linux, you know, quote-unquote enable Linux, the way that they uh, describe it. Um, let's just see if that's an option. Yeah, set up Linux on your Chromebook. How do we do this again? Under developers. Okay, let's see if that's an option here in Chrome OS Flex. There it is, Linux development environment. Sweet, so we're gonna set that up. Just put my username as Michael. Uh, disk size, recommended 10 gigs. I suppose that's fine. And it started the VM. Michael at Penguin. Oh, it calls itself Penguin, isn't that cute? So we've got Linux, we could run like, uh, I don't know, sudo apt install htop, it's kind of one of my go-tos. Go ahead and grab that. And this is, from what I understand, a Debian virtual machine. If we go back to Chrome here, yeah, you have a Debian environment, you can run Linux commands, install tools using apt package manager, or customize your shell. So what else do we want to get? I don't know, let's try um, a classic. Let's install GIMP. Yeah, at this point, I'm literally just exploring Chrome OS because, I mean, I was honestly expecting a little bit more of a challenge, but I will definitely take something working for once on this channel because it's kind of a rarity, it seems. I'm actually curious now if we go back in, okay, we do have a touchpad setting, built-in touchpad, so now we can, like, turn on or off tap to click. You've got acceleration, speed settings, reverse scrolling, which I do actually want to turn that on because I prefer that for trackpads. Uh, let's go ahead and yeah, set the set the wallpaper. Kind of mess around with our uh, display settings here. How are we doing on the terminal? Oh, we are done with GIMP. Okay, we'll check out that in a minute. But let me go in here and what do we got? Okay, so these are all like the default Google ones. Hmm, what do we have under illustrations? Let's see. Oh, we got some cool ones in here. What is this one? Oh yeah, that's the little Chrome T-Rex guy. You know, I, I'm definitely gonna apply that one. That, that's kind of neat. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that was kind of fun. I like that. What else can we do in here? We can change, yeah, our accent colors. Definitely want dark mode. And then you got screensaver settings over here. We can go ahead and mess around with that if we want to. And by the way, I mean, as you can probably tell, performance, just navigating through these menus and everything is totally fine. Which under Linux Mint, we saw, you know, the same thing. It was, performance was generally fine. Uh, but I, I do want to still try out like a, a more lightweight operating system, which, you know, you, you kind of think Chrome OS Flex would be, but I mean, it does require a minimum of four gigs of RAM, which is what we have in this system. I want to try something that like requires even less than that. So, uh, oh yeah, sound, by the way, I do want to check that out. Do we have... Okay, audio's here, that's good. We've got a slider in there. Let's just go to YouTube and see if we can pull up one of my videos. So back in 2013, Google All took right. a gamble on what was at the top. So sound works. I guess we can do some YouTube playback a little bit and just kind of see how that, I mean, it looked like it was playing back just fine. I'll go ahead and mute the audio so you don't have two of me talking. Uh, we're playing back right now at uh, what resolution? 1080p 60. We'll just full screen that. And, and a little bit of lag going into full screen there, but totally smooth video playback. No real noticeable frame drops or anything. Cool, and we'll go ahead and hop out of there and just close out of YouTube. And what was I doing? Oh yeah, GIMP. Okay, so let's go back to the G menu and there it is. So let's open up GIMP 2.10. God, this is really cool. I mean, I know it's like, who cares? Yeah, you can run Linux apps on uh, Chrome OS, but that is kind of neat. I've not really done this a whole lot. Um, in fact, I've not really used Chrome OS at all, very extensively anyways. I mean, in fact, the, the most experience I have using it are from videos on this channel where I've just installed it on stuff and, you know, messed around with it. But yeah, um, so we can make a new image. You know, I, I, I guess to end off the video, we can do that classic thing that we always do whenever we install GIMP and make some like abomination here. So we'll do like a 500 or 599 because that's what I typed in. Yeah, we'll do 599 by 599 because screw going 600 by 600. That would make way too much sense. 
And I don't know, we'll get some text here. We'll type out like, this is cool, you know, cause it really is. We'll write out, you know, hi or something. <laughs> I don't know, we'll just like draw in here, or, like just make a grass field of sorts, you know, recreate bliss. That's totally what this is, isn't it? Uh, and we'll save that just to my home folder as untitled. Yeah, because I'm not going to bother giving that a name. Oh, no, it's not responding. It's I'm going to lose my masterpiece, guys. No, come on. OK, let's let's try to save that again. Did that save? OK, image saved. That's good. All right, we'll close out of that. But there you go. That is uh, how surprisingly easy it is to install Chrome OS Flex on the 2013 Chromebook Pixel. We got the trackpad working, got the keyboard working. Touchscreen, unfortunately, does not. But I mean, hey, that's a pretty cool way to still experience the, the original operating system that would have come on this thing, you know, over a decade after it came out. And yeah, I do still want to mess around with this and put, uh, you know, a full like, well, full Linux distro back on here. Uh, something more lightweight that, you know, requires even less RAM than, than Flex does here because I, I just, like I said in the original video, I really like this laptop. I am actually probably going to end up using this in the studio here or just as a secondary laptop. I don't know because I really love the design. It's such a cool looking machine. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see some more content with it, be sure to let me know. But that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. So if you guys enjoyed this one, if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, maybe consider becoming a patron or a channel member to get early access to these videos before anybody else. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.